If you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know that blinking lights is one of my uh, one of the things that I enjoy doing just for fun. And uh, these lights here are the ones that I used in my Christmas lighting project uh, outdoors uh, this past year. They are WS2811 LEDs, which is basically the same as a NeoPix or WS2812 um, that are normally seen this way on strips. But uh, these ones have a separate chip and then an RGB LED. And typically you'll drive them from either, you know, a little controller like this that's commonly available, often comes with them, or from some sort of an Arduino thing. In the case of my Christmas lights display this past year, I used a D1 Mini um, Wemos is a typical brand name, although this one's probably a Chinese knockoff. It is an ESP8266 based board, um, so I can have Wi-Fi on it, set up a little web page on it to control it. Life is good. But uh, recently I was sent these, which are called uh, ESP Pixel Sticks. And it is a kit that is based on the ESP8266-01, which is what this guy is here. Um, the difference between in the ESP8266 family between this one and this one, this guy has, I think, uh, what, eight different uh, GPIO pins. This one has two, three if you mess around with it, but usually two. But for these lights, all you need is a single one to control them. So it'll do the job. I didn't happen to have any at the time, so I used this, which is what I had on hand. But these ESP Pixel Stick boards, which we shall, sh shall see soon, um, use one of these guys. So just as a demonstration initially, I loaded their software onto this, this one here. This is one that I had in my collection already. And this is kind of the reason this sort of bit of a mess on the breadboard here is kind of the reason why I hadn't played with them before. So this guy comes in a neat little package. It's got eight pins on it, standard spacing, but see that they're not spaced so that they will fit on a breadboard properly. If you put them like that or like that, they're going to short out everything and they aren't spaced to fit across the gutter. So anybody who uses these things to, especially for breadboard experiments, eventually ends up making something like this little adapter board here, which I've made, which just brings the pins out to breadboard standard or breadboard friendly spacing. And there's a few things that you need to do. Um, some capacitors to provide a little bit of uh, extra power supply oomph and stabilization because when this thing is in doing its RF stuff, it's transmitting over Wi-Fi, it draws a fair bit of power right away. So that's not ideal. Uh, so you need a little bit of reservoir there. There's a couple of pins that you have to pull high uh, when you're running it. To pull the reset high and pull the uh, P0 or P, oh yeah, uh, high. And when you want to program it, you have to pull GPIO zero low while you're programming it. So there's kind of a bit of messing around to do. It's not insurmountable, but it is. it can be a bit of a pain and it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, here's one board for that's commercially available from China for plugging it into USB and programming it, except it doesn't do that pull the GPIO zero low. Now then, these kits that I got from these guys, Renard Plus Lighting Control, they sent me a couple of these pixel stick ones, which basically allows you to mount the ESP on there. And it's got a couple of uh, regulators and some connections for the, uh, the lights in a nice convenient little form factor and takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And then this other kit that they sent is a programmer. So it does the job of this, plus it's got push buttons to uh, reset and to pull that GPIO low for programming. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to put these kits together, I'm going to load the software onto it, and I'm going to make these lights dance. So I think we're going to start today with the uh, reefer. 
board, which is a Renard Plus ESP Extreme Flasher. Flashing being programming, right? So on this board, um, basically it connects between this little CH340 module, USB to serial up here, uh, and the 8-pin plug that the ESP goes into and then adds just a very few support components, a capacitor, a handful of resistors, an LED, and a couple of push buttons. Not too much, so this one's going to go together fairly quickly. So there is the schematic. Here is where the USB to serial adapter goes. There is your 8-pin plug. That is a pull-up resistor. Uh, power supply filtering capacitor. The pull-up resistor is on the reset. CHPD. I'm not quite sure what that is. Oh, that's that uh, one that I wasn't quite sure what it's doing. So it's also being pulled high. It, But it, in this case, it's pulled straight to VCC. Okay. Uh, GPIO is zero. There's a pull-up and then a push button to pull it down which is what you need to do to program the thing. You need to boot it up or reset it with GPIO held zero or held low. Um, they've got a pull up on GPIO two. While it's being programmed, GPIO two is not actually doing anything, but that is the one that the, uh, the pixels will connect to later. So they're just pulling it up just to keep it out of the way, I guess. Uh, transmit and receive data goes back to the USB to serial. Okay, reasonable enough, so that's going to be fairly quick to throw together. And I think that is everything. One thing to pay attention to on the USB to serial board is this little jumper on the back here. They already got it pre-strapped for 3.3 volts, uh, which is what this needs because those ESP modules are only 3.3 volts. They're not 5 volt tolerant at all. So a moment of truth, plug in a USB cable to the computer. There it is right there. Drop the ESP module into the socket. And plug him back in. For programming this, we're not going to use the Arduino uh, IDE. You can, but it's the more complex method. The easier way to do it is to download the, uh, the software blob from the links that are on, on their web page, uh, unzip it, and you'll find in here a Java tool, an ESP SF Flasher tool, um, which does all the magic for you. Now I will run the magic Java command. Now that the program is up and running here, we pick our USB port, put in our uh, SSID and passphrase for a router and give it a host name. Now, if you're running a name server on your network, um, this would be a short way of, uh, of addressing it. I don't happen to have one, but that's not a big hairy deal. Um, but it'll also make it easier to identify which one you're using if you're using multiple ones. So let's call it stick one. Hold the program button down 
and reset it. Now it should be in program mode. And there's conflicting information on whether you have to keep holding it down or not. I'm going to. And upload. Okay, that's the first part done. There's one more bit to go here. There it is. And there it's connected to my my dummy network. And here it is. It's working. There's the name that we gave it. And here's all the different parameters on it. So, so now that we've got that programmed, all we have to do is build the board that it rides on. So here is the rest of this kit. Um, this module came out of there. I'll just leave it over there for now. You have some uh, terminal blocks, the little eight pin again, some capacitors. What is this? I think that's an NTC uh, uh, resettable fuse thing. I think that's what that is. Um, Another diode, some more capacitors, resistor, hardware for mounting one of these. Well, no, there's two screws and two nuts. Okay, so for mounting both of these. And if I remember from the mailbag, yep, 3-volt regulator, 5-volt regulator. And what is this guy? I didn't look at him before. 2 in 7,000. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Ah, it's a MOSFET. Okay. wonder what it's doing in this circuit. Now, this is interesting to note. Some of the parts are optional, but they're still listed in the build materials. If I'm going to use this with 12-volt power supply for 12-volt pixels, install the 7805. Huh, all of the pixels that I've got are 5 volts. So, I think I will skip that step. I can put it on later if I need it. I couldn't find a schematic for this board in the manual, which is too bad for what we do here, uh, but I can make some pretty pretty good educated guesses on what's going on. So first component on this board. Okay, I think that's got it. I'm just going to go in with my magnifying glass and make sure I haven't done anything stupid. And then we'll uh, carry on. I think that'll do. Now that I've cleaned all the uh, crud off the board here, I'm going to power it up without the ESP in there initially and just to see if it works. That's got five volts on it. Power it on to three milliamps. That's good. So I'll measure from ground to where's the output on the 1117. The 1117's output is 3.3 volts. Try not to short it with my probe. Yep. That's good. That one there is the ground. No, that one there is the positive. So 
So that should be three volts. Come on. And it is, that's good. I think that's all I really need. Oh, I guess, is there five volts getting out here? Yes, there he is. And that's the pixel output. Okay. So I think we're good. So now we can take our programmed ESP, plug him onto there, and connect the blinky lights up to here. Hmm, now that the... Oh, I can just barely see them. Data's in the middle, ground's in the outside, V in, or V plus is on the inside. Okay. Should I zoom out to show the lights or should I zoom in to show the smoke? Hmm. Let's be brave. The lights all flashed. That's a good sign. We're drawing about 100 milliamps over here, which I guess makes sense. Nothing's getting hot. That guy's got a blue light on him. Okay. Let's go over to the computer and see what happens. And there it is. It is stick one. It is on my uh, my workshop uh, Wi-Fi network. Device setup. 170 pixels. I don't have that many. I've probably got less than 50. But that's okay. Save that. Effects. Rainbow. Ha, ha, ha. Would you look at that. So let's see what other effects there are in here quickly. Solid color. And you can pick whatever color you want. Wow, that updates fast too. Okay. Blink. Which just does that. You can speed it up and slow it down. Flash. Okay. Rainbow we've already seen. Chase. That's pretty fast. So let go of it here. That's cool. And again, you can set that to do it in whatever color you want. Uh, fire flicker. What is fire flicker? I'm going to pick a little bit tamer color here. That's kind of fiery. I guess. What else? Breathe. Okay. Lightning. Huh. Okay. That's interesting. I don't think that works all that well on camera, but... Well, that's pretty cool. I'm going to go back to Rainbow because that's the best visual effect for on camera. And then Diagnostics just shows you what it should be doing. If you have it set up in a grid. Okay, there's the 50 pixels that I told it it has. And it set it up in a 10 by 5 grid. So, huh. Well, that's pretty neat. Well, that is a cool little kit. Thanks to, uh, to these guys. Dean and Kirk, I think his partner was. It said on the website. Uh, for sending me this, I didn't ask for it. I didn't know they were sending it. This was, I guess, just a review sample or something. Um, but I do appreciate them sending it to me. How big is this board anyway? So in the manual, it shows this just going into a piece of pipe to waterproof it. But it's... Uh, how big is it here? It's about... Eight centimeters long by about two centimeters, three centimeters wide. Two centimeters wide. So that's uh, that's a nice small little thing. I guess it's a little bit longer 
Um, yeah, nine if you count the module. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a slick little kit. And they sent me a second one of them because the software that you can use with this thing, well, first of all, the software that I just showed you is the default software on it, but there is other software that they talk about on their website and they have links to, to a community page that shows other software that'll work with this, that you can control multiples as part of one large light show, which is a very cool idea. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks to those guys for sending it. Um, questions and comments down below in the description. I will talk to you later.